Hi everyone, welcome to another Autodesk screencast by Zan Ta of Reaper Products. This screencast will showcase how to create a generic model wall-based family. If you like this video and would like to see more, please search for Zan Ta or VAR2016. Thanks for watching. Here I am in Revit 2017 in the Recent Files window. I can click New under Families and head over to the Generic Model section. Now we'll pick Wall-based. I'll click open and you'll notice you have a wall and you have the placement side and you have a reference plane here and inside here that dictates the placement of the actual object that you're dealing with. If I head over to the placement side elevation and type in ZA for zoom all to fit, you'll see that wall, you'll see the reference plane and the level. So let's go ahead and create say a custom uh, mounting bracket if you will that is wall-based to be placed on that wall uh, and maybe it's for uh, you know for example uh, to hang a bike so let's head over to either the left or the right side and again do ZA to zoom all there's the placement side so remember which side you're working with we want to create reference planes that define how high it is off the level how tall this mounting bracket is how far does it jut out um, and how thick it is perhaps against that wall. And we'll do a very simple mounting bracket uh, and it'll be kind of like a J, a backward J shape one. We'll also create reference planes for the thickness as well. And so we're sketching, if you will, the skeleton system of this um, J, backward J shaped mounting bracket that's in the left elevation. I'll create dimensions that define the base height level from the level. We'll create a dimension for the height of the object. We'll create a dimension for the how far it juts out from the face of the wall. And we'll create dimensions for the thickness. And then also a dimension on um, the inner horizontal or vertical bracket if you will. Now let's just pick any one of these little thicknesses here and parameterize it and call it bracket thickness. And we'll change that bracket thickness as a default to be mm, half inch thick. And so we'll go ahead and grab the rest of them and make sure that they're also a half inch thick. We'll select the height dimension here and parameterize this and call it bracket height. And we'll make that bracket height as a default of say uh, a foot is fine. And then the width will parameterize this as well, call the bracket width. Now, if it gets kind of messy like this, it's okay. You can go through real simply, just change the scale. The higher the scale, in other words, the higher vertical you go up here in the list, the bigger the text will look. So if I drop it down to say eighth inch, it'll look like so. Let's drop it to 1 20th, it gets larger. So go reverse, so go one inch is equal to a foot. And now it's a little easier to see. And I'll switch it to one and a half to make it even easier to see. So we'll zoom in here. And we need this other last dimension to define the mounting bracket height. Um, mounting bracket rear height. Something like that. So all of that can be controlled if we need to. So I'll make the bracket width, say, 9 inches. Uh, rear height is being say three inches. <clears throat> Hit OK. And now we can start to build our shape. So we'll head over to the Create tab, click Extrusion, and I'll use the Pick Line method. That way I can use the Lock feature as I'm drawing it. The other reason I do this is because if I use this line method by two clicks, point, point by point, uh, you cannot 
uh, lock it as you're drawing that line. You have to use the align command afterwards. Uh, and it's kind of annoying. So let's use the trim to corner command, clean up the corners. Like so, finish it, and finish the extrusion. We'll shade it so you can see what we're looking at. Let's head over to the placement side, and now you're going to see that this object is created. We don't actually have the definition of the width of it looking at it from a frontal approach. So let's create reference planes here. And then dimension for that thickness, and then also the equality condition so that they grow correctly. Let's go ahead and parameterize this. We have bracket height, width, thickness, um, and this is kind of bracket depth, but really it's not. But for the purposes of this video, that's fine. Let's go ahead and select our geometry and push and pull the faces that we need to align and lock where we need to align and lock. And that bracket depth is 8 inches right now. Let's change that bracket depth to 4 inches. Hit OK. And there you go. So let's look at this in 3D. And our mounting bracket looks like that. We can go ahead and obviously select it and assign material to it if we need to. We'll call it bracket material. and then go to the Family Types window, click inside here, and make it a material, let's say copper. We don't have it in the family, but we do have it in the list of available uh, library. So I'll double click and place it. And we'll do the shading and make it this brownish color. And the surface pattern being this one is fine. And hit OK and hit OK. So now that we've done this, if we shade it, we can see what it looks like. Let's open up a new Revit project. And since this is wall based, we'll create a wall. We'll toggle back to our family and load it into the project. You notice that it only shows up if there's a wall. See that? So I, again, I can click to place it. And you'll see it gets placed. We'll look at it in 3D. And so you can see that I have it on two, two sides of the wall. And you know, if you select it, you go to the type properties, and you can see the different things, such as the uh, mounting height, so on and so forth. So if you make any changes, you should be OK. Last thing you want to double check in the family, go back to the family environments, go to the placement side. We don't have a dimension from the bottom down to that level. Let's go to the left side. Did we create one? Yes, we did, but we didn't parameterize it. So we'll go in here and parameterize that and call it Mounting height. Save it. Load it back into the project. So we're going to call it custom generic model or wall based one. We'll load it into the project and overwrite the one that we have. Now let's look at this in 3D. So we have them there. If I select them and go to the type properties, you can see we have mounting height. So let's make that 9 and hit OK. So they all change. Now it doesn't look like it's very high because this wall is up to 20 feet. It's unconnected. Let's go to level 2 which is only 10 feet. So now you can see how high it is. And that's it. That's how you create a custom generic model wall based family. Thank you very much for watching.